peeps this is Kimberly purpose and welcome to my channel today I'm doing the fourth <laughs> part to the series I've done this is going to be the last I'm gonna try not to be so long on it on the um, American Aborigines uh, slave trade and uh, yeah I am I believe I'm on the, the fourth page fourth or fifth page uh, the article uh, the third on the third part it, the uh, video cut off on me <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to finish reading the passage and the passage was talking about um, the Cherokee Indians and um, it was talking about Van uh, one of the, uh, the leaders in the Cherokee and he was a slaveholder and so I'm going to go ahead and continue with this paragraph. It says, The material success of slaveholders such as Van did not, in the end, save the Cherokees from removal. While some native slaveholders, owners, um, yeah, slave owners in the South may have been temporarily enriched by slaveholding, historian Claudio Salt argues as the demands of cactus rose, it destabilized the entire region. The dehumanization of non-Europeans um, ultimately allowed white colonists to justify the killing of southeastern Indians and the appropriation of their land. The explicit racist underpinning of slavery in the South left native people there even slaveholders who participated in this system vulnerable when white demand the land when the white demand for land prevailed the native population would inevitably lose that's so sad so what happened is um they ended up killing going on a killing spree killing a bunch of the indians off and stealing their land that's pretty much what happened they, um, the mongoloid I believe these are mongoloids they might even be black Indians because I believe the slave trade wasn't as big as it was because only um, I believe this uh, article I read somewhere I researched it was only like five or eight percent um, people owned slaves it was the super rich that really owned the slaves it wasn't as many um, slave owners as they you know you know not, it wasn't like everybody had a slave. You had to have money to own a slave. So it wasn't nearly as extensive as it was. You had to be wealthy to own a slave, own several slaves. So they ended up killing them. And they, there were still some black Indians that were slaves. And there may be some that were free. I know the Cherokee Nation had some freedmen, you know, and they were black and they were Aborigine Indians. You know, to be exact, and someone might have been biracial as well. But that is so sad. So they killed off the Indians, and they um, and it, when they did that, um, the the um, Cherokee Nation became very um, vulnerable to being further dismantled, you know, completely dismantled and uh, split. So the next paragraph says, during removal, some wealthy Cherokees were able to take their Enslaved people along, many walked the trail of tears along, the along with the natives who held them in bondage. If you were rich in the southeast, you got to basically start over again with a captive labor force, Miles said, which does not mean, which doesn't mean that removal wasn't awful. It was still awful, but it meant that you had a leg up and rebuilding your wealth wow they took this man's land and he had to start all over again they were so jealous of his success it's so sad but that's what happens just like um what happened to the native american here in his um in his true story uh with uh, with the this james felon van you know it happened to a lot of the blacks the aborigines um, such as Black Wall Street and Rosewood, you know, um, building towns and everything and getting them destroyed by Europeans. Um, the same thing with the Trail of Tears. 
you know, he's become successful. They see his success. They did not like seeing him successful. So they stripped him of his success because they it's just that greed. Greed of having more and not, you know, being very selfish and greedy. But anyway, let's go on to the next paragraph. It says, Slaves Net Narratives. There are work progress administration or hero histories given by black slaves who were once owned by Cherokees and other tribes. Report favorably on the experience of being held by natives. Miles told me that she thought the historian should take these narratives with a grain of salt, pointing out that there were also many stories of native slaveholders selling and punishing their black bondsmen. There were many ways to have a margin of autonomy in Native American context. There are examples of Native people freeing their slaves and marrying them, she said. But at the same time, there are many instances of violence, behaviors that tend to take place on the larger plantations. So it depends on where you were enslaved and who enslaved you. But some natives, people held Africans on small farms when they might eat out the same pot as the master, as Miles put it, treat them as a kind of family in her book. However, Miles wrote about Cherokee farmers who enslaved an African woman, lived with her for decades and never freed her despite her bearing his children. In that particular case, years of intimacy did not lead to emancipation. Oh, so you see here, um, some Indians freed, freed their slaves, but then there were still some that didn't. They wanted to follow the whole dynamics of European slavery, and so they refused to set any of their, uh, some of their, some slaves were not set free. But I believe a lot of these slaves are related to these Indians. <laughs> I believe all they did was capture the darker complexion Indians and threw them in the slave trade. So it's a possibility they were cousins, they were relatives, and maybe that might be another reason why, you know, they weren't so harsh to each other because they were actually family, you know, more closer than you think. But I'm going on to the next passage, uh, the next session. And and it says here, the historians I spoke with said that they found this history challenging to talk about in moral terms, perhaps more so than the history of African slavery. There you go again. Like I said, that African slavery. Ah, they're going to have to do away with that. We already know that blacks were already here in the United States, but let's continue. Um, I think popular story likes to talk about good guys and bad guys Snyder says the complexities of the history of native native enslavement leave such clear distinction behind some may think that I do not uh, philosophize enough Alan Galley writes in his introduction to his book and I have the responsibility of always separating good from evil or creating a parable from which the moral of the story may easily be drawn. I wish that it was that simple. The fact that native people so often assist in the enslavement of people from other tribes makes the story a complicated one. Yes, Europeans did have native assistance in implementing their ends. They were also the ones who put native tribes under the existential pressure that forced many Indians to sell fellow natives into slavery. This tragedy does not make for so clear-cut narratives, says the bravery of fugitive African Americans, aka Aborigines, but anyway, let's continue, who took the Underground Railroad to freedom. Yet, it's a strategy, nonetheless. Many stories of Native American slavery force us to think about the strategies Native people use to respond to the relentless European desire for labor. Some, like the Yemenisi, 
who with their allies rose up to challenge British uh, colonists in South Carolina in 1715 through 1716 fought um, enslavement with violent resistance some like the warriors who brought the long coffle of Sioux to Montreal in 1741 or the Cherokee Creek Ch Chickasaw and Choctaw who took the African slaves to any country in 1830 and tried to adopt by becoming part of the system. Wow. It's, these, it's just amazing how, you know, so much history in this country. We can really learn so much in the past. And, you know, you know, you get a chance to hear the um, Dumancy, the Dumancy, I think I'm pronouncing them the correct the Yumansi, I think it's Yumansi uh, tribe, they are Aboriginal. They were black. That was a black tribe, and they were fierce warriors. I love to read about them um, fighting wars. And they disbanded them and put a lot of them into the slave trade, you know. And they did that with a lot of Aborigines. And, of course, the Cherokee and the Creek and the Chick Chickasaw and the Choctaw had a lot of black Aborigines in them. You know, most of them, it was, I would say, a lot of them had a lot of Cherokee in them. In them. That's not, not Cherokee, but Aborigines. <laughs> there were a lot of them with Aborigines. And, um, yeah. And it's just, this. it's just so much that we can learn from our history knowing that we... Um, as Aborigines, aka the Afro African Americans, have a much deeper history than just being a slave, and knowing that we're not from Africa and that we actually were indig or are indigenous here, makes a big difference and brings a sense of identity. You know, it gives us a sense of knowing who we are as individuals, but. Let's uh, read the last part. It says here, later some work with European law to challenge a tradition of Indian enslavement. In 1739, a native man known as Caesar sued for his own freedom in London, Connecticut, New London, Connecticut. He argued that his mother Betty had surrendered during King Philip War in 1676, which should have set free after 10 years of servitude rather than enslaved and he himself should have been born a free man more than a few seconds or in third generations native slaves brought such cases in new england in the 1730s and 1740s and so doing writes margaret allen newell who fueled new england's growing abolition abolitionists uh, forcing men in power to reconsider the legal basis for enslavement. Natives were thus put of this was thus a part of the history of American slavery at the beginning and at the end. Yes, it has. And I agree with the writer. Um, the natives were definitely involved and they were definitely all up in the middle of this whole <laughs> dynamic of American history and I think it's just now coming to part coming to pass and how extensive it is and how um, true that uh, Indians were enslaved and this um, reading this article just show how you know with the tribes being apart and that not having a unity and coming together um, made it easier for Europeans to come in and take over. You know, they use slavery, you know, and money and getting products or whatever that they wanted to get rid of their enemies. And and really, it turned out to be their downfall, you know, not the lack of unity, the lack of tribes coming together. Um, just imagine if the Indians came together and was united in a solid force, uh, more than likely the Europeans would not have been able to take over the land so easily. <laughs> but they were able to, to 
get set the tribes apart and split them up and have them fight amongst each other and creating more riffraff that's what made that you know caused them to not come together and it caused a big mess and and made slave slavery more easy you know much easier so while i guess the moral of this article is, it says that unity is very important you must you know come together and have a, a mutual understanding um that's what i learned and i also learned that we have a um much deeper history than we think we're not just slaves you know the african americans aka aborigines were not just slaves we were actually indigenous here and that and it's good to know that the indians were enslaved too so it just shows you know that it's their way of acknowledging of our indigenous background that you know we are the aborigines of america and yes slavery was a dark part of our history but we're more than just being a slave we are indigenous and that yes we were, are a part of certain you know tribes you know at one time we were actually fierce warriors you know we actually had land we actually appreciate and love mother earth and we were close to the land and had a heritage and identity that we as aborigines need to reconnect to and it will make a big difference in having us to know who we are and whom we are and what we can become in the future so that's the conclusion of this article this article has a lot of references in it that's what i love about it more resources more articles stories books that you can read um i'm gonna put a link in the description please like this video uh, and don't forget to subscribe until next time peace and be blessed bye bye